that we have for you, our relationship with you, fellowship with you, and to be more and more like you. Lord, this evening as we have come after the hard work in your presence to recharge our batteries, to renew our mind, change our lifestyle, and follow your instructions. This evening as you teach us, O Lord, make this teaching easy to understand, practical to apply, and see manifestation of your glory. As you take us through this journey, Lord, open our hearts, our minds, interpret the scriptures to us so that we can understand it practically in our lives. Lord, let every deception and lies of the devil be exposed and destroyed. Every stronghold be destroyed of the kingdom of darkness. And let there be new strongholds built in our mind of the word of God. We thank you, we praise you. And Lord, every word that has been preached tonight, confirm this word with accompanying signs and wonders. We thank you, we praise you. In the glorious name of Jesus, amen. So today we got a fantastic topic. The name of the topic is Shut Your Mouth. <laughs> is that good? What's the name of the topic? Shut Your Mouth. Hallelujah. 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 So from the last three days we were studying about how a mouth is a weapon that has the power to destroy the works of the devil, right? And we have been seeing how God has been asking us to speak the unseen to the seen. So today we are going to see how when people spoke things that are seen, they destroyed their whole future. Are you with me? We are going to take some examples of people who spoke the seen in their lives and even though it was God's plan for them to have a great future, God's plan did not get accomplished, but what they believed and what they spoke came to pass. So first thing I must, I, I want to ask you, how many of you believe that God is all powerful? Good. He is almighty. Good. Does everything happen according to God's plan? According to God's will? So that means every murder that took place, it was God's will. Every wrong thing that happened, it was God's will. Please understand, even though God is all powerful, He has got His will, but yet things don't happen according to His will because He has given to man the freedom of choice. For example, uh, did He give Adam the Garden of Eden? Yes. Did he give him everything in it? Yes. Did he give him one instruction? You shall not eat the fruit of the tree. The day you eat it, you will surely die. Praise God. Now was it God's will for Adam to eat it? Then why did God put that tree there? Huh? If he had not put the tree, there would have been no problem. I always had this question. God, why did you put the tree? If the tree was not there, there would have never been a problem. Praise God. When we love somebody, we love somebody to the core that we say, listen, I have the freedom of choice, but because I love you, I choose to do what you instructed me. So Adam had to show his love to God. Yes, he was given the freedom of choice. You can eat it. Or you can say, no, I'm not going to eat it because God said it. Okay? But he took the other one. He ate it. And that disobedience brought destruction in Adam's life. Right? Let's take another example. The Israelites. Was it God's will for them to die in the wilderness? No. It was God's will for them to take them to the promised land, flowing with milk and honey. Did it happen? Which Bible are you reading? Hello, did it happen? No. They all died in the wilderness except for Caleb and Joseph. Praise God. So please understand, even though tonight 
God's plan for everybody is welfare and good and and great and prosperous and success and all that. But even though it is God's plan for you, it does not come to pass until I choose to cooperate and agree with him. It's not one-way traffic. It's two-way traffic. So once you understand that, then you begin to realize, aha, uh -huh, that means everything that's happening in my life, God is not the one responsible. I am the one who is responsible. You know? Now you might say, how do you prove that? Simple. Did Jesus say, what a man sows that he shall reap? Or did Jesus say, what the Father wills that is what shall be done? Even when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he had a choice to turn back. But he made a choice to agree with the Father. And to agree with the Father, did he have to go through a hardship of being crucified? Yes, come on. And when he did the Father's will, it was not easy. But the end result of the Father's will was extreme victory for him. In the same way, every day, we are given choices. And in this freedom of choices, the question is, am I going to carry out what God said in his word, or am I going to carry out what seems to be easy, what seems to give me profit, what seems to make me satisfied, and if that is what a person is carrying out, he ends up into destruction. So tell yourself, my future is in my hands. Is that clear? Now let me show you some things of people who opened their mouth. Let's go to Luke Chapter 1. Is it interesting topic today? Shut your mouth. All right. Brother Vijay, today's topic name is Shut Your Mouth. Yes, praise God. Okay, verse number 9. Are we ready? According to the custom of the priest office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. That is the Kedia, the high priest. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. When Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Fear not, Zechariah, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and you shall call his name John. And you shall have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall neither drink wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and in the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. I am an old man and my wife as past her age to bear children. When she was young, she did not bear any children. And now that she is old and I am old, it's not possible. Praise God. Now my question to you is, Zachariah, when he was given this message, was he on scene or unseen? See, 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 the message that he received was unseen. But where was Zachariah's mind? Seen or unseen? Seen. And as long as his mind is on scene, can he operate in the supernatural? Come on. Because he is looking at himself, old man, looking at his wife, old lady. All his life he tried, did not get a single baby, praise God. And now in old age, here comes a man with wings, the angel, and talking to him, praise God, and telling him, you are going to bear a son. Praise God. 
And the angel answered, said an answer. So was Zachariah questioning what was spoken to him? Was he questioning the word of God? Yeah, yeah. So the word of God is answering Zachariah for what he was questioning. And the angel answering said to him, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. So did the angel give his name? Yes, angel, Gabriel. And I am sent to speak to you and to show you this glad tidings. And behold, you shall be, you shall be, please read there. You shall be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these so, 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 is he promising him that these things will still come to pass? Whether you like it or not, these things will come to pass. But before they come to pass, I will see to it that your tongue, which is your engine, that is firing unbelief, I will shut it down so that your speaking will not hinder what I have planned in your life. So in other words, he's saying, it is better for a person to shut his mouth instead of talking unbelief. Please remember that. And I want you to remember that. It is more powerful to shut your mouth and say nothing instead of opening your mouth and speaking your doubts and speaking your fears, and speaking your unbelief, and activating the law of sin and death, and destroying your future. Now, let's take our life. We too face certain situations in our life. And we read the word of God. Now, when you are reading the word of God, isn't it God speaking to us through the written word? So when God is speaking to us through the written word, is he talking all the time, seen things or unseen things? Unseen things. And we are trying to solve a problem which is seen with seen things. Right? Come on. And when God is speaking his word, do we speak his word or do we speak our seen word? So most of the time, do we ourselves opening our mouth Curse our own future. Yes. Hello? Yes. Can we talk, please? Yes. Hallelujah. 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 In other words, did Zechariah ask him the question? How is it possible? The you voice, want to hear it from here? The, okay. the, the voice was not coming. We just corrected it. Okay, okay. Without voice? Uh, Tony? <laughs> Praise God. Thank God, Brother Vijay. Yeah. You had mute me. <laughs> he, you shut my mouth? <laughs> I told the topic is shut your mouth. I did not say you shut my mouth. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So, 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 Zachariah had a physical situation. God began to speak to him. Now, did the angel Gabriel say, Zachariah, your prayers are answered? Give me verse 18, no? In 
Literie.
If you want to ruin somebody's life, go and keep on asking questions. And they keep on answering their unbelief. Their lives are ruined. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, why is uh, the Lord shutting off his angel? Let's say you are Zakarian and you are married, okay? So you got the message from the angel and you went back home. And now will you talk to your spouse what happened? Yes. yes. Come on, will you? Know? And then you will say, you know, today was an amazing situation that I encountered. I was in the temple in the Holy of Holies, worshipping God, nobody around, and all of a sudden, a man with wings appeared, praise God, and he introduced himself, his angel Gabriel, and he spoke to me, and he said, you know, you're going to conceive. And Elizabeth, <laughs> what did you say? I'm going to conceive. Don't hurt me now. All your life we tried so much, and there was never a chance. It never happened. And now I passed my age, and you're saying, were you dreaming? Have you lost your mind? Is this discussion going to take them into unbelief? Yes. How many times it has happened in your life that you had built up yourself with the word of God? Pumped that faith in you, and when you went to speak to somebody, and that somebody was pumped with unbelief. And now when the conversation began, by the time you left, you agreed with that person and your faith was all gone. Yes. <coughs> conversation with one another is very important. With whom are you conversing? Your communication is with whom? The one who will pump in faith and lead you to agree to the things unseen? are the ones who will pump into you all the news taking place around the world and put all kind of unbelief in you. Some people, they have every news in town with them. <laughs> From the world system. And they keep forwarding everybody those news. And they don't even know they are working for the devil. Hallelujah. 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 And at the end, the wife would have said, Zakaria, you have lost your mind. You are so much longing for a child that now you are seeing creatures with wings. <laughs> we need to take you to all those things. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, with that kind of discussion, would it still, would it still, would it still, with that kind of discussion, would it still go on to believe the unseen or looking at their situation, the wife would convince him that what you're thinking is gone crazy. Any spouse has ever experienced the other spouse giving them unbelief? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk about that. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As I, I, as I was explaining yesterday, let me explain to you today. Let me explain to you. I'm thinking which which one is God? <laughs> the voice is mine, but I'm keeping my mouth shut and it's coming out. Hallelujah. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm giving you a testimony of mine. Okay. About 19 years back, I'm caught up with depression extreme depression that I've lost my mind, lost my memory. And I've got an affliction of demonic problems and therefore my, my body is shaking this way throughout the day. 
I'm throughout the day like this. Okay? And a lady comes to my house and tells my wife, if we can take him to a place that I know where there are signs, wonders and miracles happening, your husband can get well. So my wife says, I do not know that place and she locks her two children at home, takes me about 55 kilometers and now the mass is going on. Okay? And I'm entering in and during that time I would attack anybody. The first place that they took me, in five to seven minutes they put me out of the center. You know why? Because I bashed up seven people and bit one fellow such in such a way that he bled. Now, does anybody want to come anywhere close to me? <laughs> Hello? So if you don't want to remain in the retreat center, bite somebody so hard that he bleeds, they put you out. <laughs> Isn't that good? <laughs> so I'm put out and now my wife, nobody wants to come anywhere close to me. But one man comes close to me, puts his hands around me with compassion and takes me to a place called Chimbur in Bombay. And there Father Jose is celebrating the Eucharist. The Eucharist gets over. He comes, he lays his hands on me, and I'm, this is what my wife said, I abused him with all bad words. I can't remember my name, but I can remember the bad words. Can you believe? <laughs> can you believe that? Okay. When he's praying, he prayed for two minutes, he turns to my wife and says, take him home, he is set free. Now, remember this. When I have come in, I am going this way. After prayer also, I am going this way. And what is he saying? Your husband is set free, take him home. Now, what, can, what do you think my wife should believe? I am asking you, what should my wife believe? The scene. You know what she believes? What the priest said. And she said, thank you, Father. And the Father says, bring him here for the next eight days to receive the Eucharist, the divine mercy prayer, the word of God, praise and worship. She says, okay. So in the rickshaw, she is going on saying what? You are set free. <coughs> the next morning when I get up, she has taught the children to say, Dada, you are set free. So in a day, I'm hearing this word, you are set free, more than 100 times. Has my symptom changed? Yes. No, it's still continuing. The next day, she's saying the same. The next day, she's saying the same. The next day, she's saying the day. But on the fourth day, when I get up, everything has changed, and my memory is restored, everything is normal, the head is not going this side, that side, I'm set free. Amen. Now my question to you is, if you were in a... Let's be honest here. Many of you are sitting here because the scene has tortured you so much that you have come here and said, Brother, I need a solution. But when a question is asked, you give a theoretical answer right. But in your practical life, the answer is not right. It's opposite. I can give an answer right in a classroom, but the exam is not here. The exam is when I'm living my life out there. And if my answer over there is right, then surely in my life, the answer will always be with right manifestation. Hallelujah. 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 Hear what is happening about Zakaria. What's happening to Zakaria? He is saying, no. Looking at the things. And God is saying, yes. And what is the power that activates the yes to no? My tongue. Did you ever see God creating anything without his tongue? Come on. Do you see Jesus performing a single miracle without speaking? Do you see Moses calling those plagues without speaking? Do you see Moses Parting the Red Sea without speaking? Do you see Jericho wall coming down without speaking? Go and search 
in the whole Bible, signs and wonders only follow when there is picking. Now you will say, but Jesus never spoke for the woman who got healed of the issue of blood. Jesus did not speak, but she was speaking. Somebody was speaking. So, my question is, when I am speaking, am I speaking the unbelief or am I speaking the belief? And if I cannot speak the belief, it is better for me to shut my mouth and not speak the unbelief. It is more powerful to keep your mouth shut than open your mouth and speak unbelief. Please touch your neighbor and say, if you don't have faith, tell your neighbor. If you don't have faith, shut your mouth! <laughs> touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, if you are doubting, Shut your mouth! Shut your mouth! <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, if you are in pain, Touch your neighbor and say, if you are worrying, Shut your mouth! It is better to shut your mouth than speak Unbelief. Please write that capital letters, please. You can laugh, but after you go out from here, when the husband says, da 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 then speak unbelief. God shut Zacharias' mouth to get his job done. And when his mouth was shut, <coughs> Angel Gabriel said, These things shall be performed. Verse 20, brother. These things shall be performed. Because you did not believe God's word. So God was ensuring... happens until it happens so did angel Gabriel say you will be dumb forever no only to get the job done see there he say until it comes to pass praise God hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. so here is the secret right down right down this is very important here is the secret that is the wisdom of God there's a secret, the wisdom of God. God said, God said, I will take the things 
God said, I will take the things that are not. I will take the things that are not and bring to not. That first not is N O T. And bring to not N A U G H T. And bring to not the things that are. Bring to not the things that are. In other words, he used the word to bring to not childlessness, to bring to not barrenness. So God used things that are not. He used the word for pregnancy to bring to not childlessness, barrenness, the curse. Praise God. Hallelujah. So write down in capital letters, bold, double, treble, bold, capital letters. This is very, very important. Write down. Words that are not spoken. Words that are not spoken are much more powerful. Words that are not spoken are much more powerful than words that are spoken than words that are spoken in unbelief then words that are spoken in unbelief is that clear hello is that clear yes, yes. has anybody ever got angry yes. in the family when you are angry, you speak all the promises of God. <laughs> Come on, has anybody, when you are angry, you speak the promises of God or the oracles of God? Now, when we are angry, what do we speak? We speak all our unbelief. And in that time, we don't realize we have just activated curses on our own family. <coughs> and when you are angry and you will speak the word of God, it is better to keep your mouth shut than open your mouth and speak all that unbelief. Let's take another case of a person who has been revealed secrets from God and he opens and speaks those secrets in the open. It was God who was giving this man a secret which should have been kept hidden. But he exposes it out in the open for the devil to know these secrets. And when the devil comes to know these secrets, how the devil beats him up to the core to finish him off completely. Let me give you here. I'm going to call attention. Praise God. Please welcome Joseph from Genesis 37. The testimony of Joseph. Come on. Is the topic good? Yes. Is it? Was five. Genesis 37 verse 5 and Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it and he told it and he told it to his brothers and they and they hated him yet the moon. So listen, listen. When God speaks to you something and you go and talk to somebody who is in the flesh. The devil will use that person to destroy you. When God speaks to you, He speaks you, speaks to you heart to heart, spirit to spirit, in secrets. And if you want to speak to God about what He has revealed to you, 
He has given us a prayer which nobody understands, even the devil cannot understand, and that is called the gift of tongues. Yes. So I can keep those things in my mind of what God has shown me that He's going to do through the scriptures, and instead of telling everybody, I can I can pray in tongues and empower and ask God the Holy Spirit to intercede in those areas and the devil does not know it at all. Are you, are you with me? Yes. Praise God. But this man tells his brothers. Now when he tells his brothers, what does the devil do? When he comes to know that God has this dream for this man and this man is going to be a deliverer for his family, he hates him to the core and that's why he brings what? Hatred among his brothers. What happens after a few dream, uh, after a few verses? Again, in verse number 9. And he dreamed yet another dream and he told his brothers. And this time he even told his father. And his father who is anointed also did not understand him and he rebuked him. Hallelujah. Hey listen, when there is a call on your life, get ready. There will be others who hate. The devil is going to use somebody close to you to hate you. <coughs> Hello? That's why the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4 of chapter 3 verse 13, he says, marvel not when the world hates you. Because when your calling is of the Lord, there is going to be the devil who will try to get that vision, get that dream, get that focus out of your life because a man with a vision is extremely dangerous for the kingdom of darkness. Is extremely dangerous. See, we live a life as a Christian, but many of us live a life with never a vision. But when a person makes a vision that this is what God I am desiring for, and I want you to equip me in this area, Lord, that according to this word, I'm willing to do that. And when a person has got a vision and day and night is preparing with only one focus to get that vision for the kingdom of God, he becomes a real threat to the devil because his life will bring deliverance after deliverance after deliverance, not only to his own life, but the multitude beyond his imagination. Because when I saw the miracles happening, I was crying and I was saying, God, in that retreat, I was crying and saying, God, what this priest has got, I want everything of it. I remember in those days, you know, for the first time I read that the woman with the issue of blood touching the garment, I used to always go stand beside him and slowly touch the garment of Father Joseph, thinking the power will flow, praise mm -hmm. God. Hallelujah. I did that many times. Hallelujah. Many times, many times. Then I began to realize the power is in the word of God. Amen. The power is in the word of God because the word is Jesus, the word that became flesh. So instead of touching father's clothes, I began to touch the garment here, the Bible. Wow. Are you understanding? Yes. Then there was only one focus. This is what I'm going to do in my life. This is what I'm going to do in my life. One focus, one focus. When I got that vision, how much the devil beat me up to destroy this vision? My near and one, near ones came against me. Persecution, opposition, stopping, this, that. But there was one thing. God, when you have started something, you will make it grow you will make it strong, you will begin to perfect it, and only you will bring it to completion. My job is to only cooperate with you, only agree with you, not look at the things that are seen, but continue to look at things that are unseen. And if, with, and if God is with me, uh, who can be against me? 
ए ब्रदर ये पांच रुपया वाला टाटू है ये भी है ये भी ये भी एक साथ पांच रुपया में किया था बैंड्रा फुटपाथ पे वो बैटरी लगा के ट्रू ट्रू कर दी But from eight years to thirty-three years, every fruit in me was not for the tattoo sake; it was on the devil. Are you are you understanding this? Yes. It's not what you put on the outside; what's on the inside produces the fruit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Producing thirty-three years, the fruit of the devil. Amen. <laughs> Ah, in seven. Okay, okay. The second seven, not the first one. Please come. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's see. let's see now. His father sends him out to look out for his brothers. They have gone out and see what happens. In verse number eighteen. Hey, <coughs> not eighteen. Let's take seventeen. Seventeen, my both are there. Okay, fifteen is the child. Fifteen, twenty. I'm sorry. Let's start. Oh, you're still on eleven. No problem. Come to fifteen. No, start with start with fifteen. I know I'm confusing you. World is full of confusion. If you don't get trained here, you will not be successful outside. Okay. And a certain man found him. Oh, Joseph. What was he doing? Searching for his brothers. Hallelujah. He was wandering in the field, and the man asked him, saying. What are you seeking? And he said, "I seek my brothers. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flock." And the man said, "Now was this man a stranger? Come on, was this man a stranger? Okay, this man was a stranger, and this man said, 'They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan.' How in the world did he find a stranger who had the News about his brothers, and because of this stranger who had a good heart, not a bad heart, gave him the right direction and said, "Your brothers have gone to God." Now, did did they did he give him the wrong address? No, they have really gone to God. So, was the heart condition of the stranger good? Come on, was it good? But that Dothan, Joseph did not even know. When he would reach Dothan, his whole future and his life would change forever. So, so in our lives, we have all experienced many a times Dothan, and we were so joyful to reach that Dothan, and not knowing from there a whole direction would change. Praise God! Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him, who the brothers? Now, what if this stranger had not met Joseph? Would he go home? Yes. Yeah. Yes. He would not find his brother. But this man, a stranger, led him to Dothan. And because he led him to Dothan, started the journey. And they saw him even far off, even before he came near him. Then they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, "Behold, this." This. So were they angry with Joseph, or were they angry with his vision? So is the devil is the devil angry with you or with the vision? Is the devil angry with you or the word of God in you? Is the devil angry with you or the faith that you are carrying with you? Are you understanding? Okay, because the devil doesn't have to fight with a person who has no faith because he is already squished. But when a person is pumping in faith. He knows that if I don't get him at this age, when he's small, and he's going to grow into giant faith, this fellow is not only going to come out of this trap, but he will teach others how to come out of their traps. Yeah, it's sooner or later. Praise God. Come on, therefore, let us slay him and cast him into some pit, and we will say some evil.
My question to you is, was Jacob anointed? Yes. Oh yeah. So when he was anointed and he was blessing his children, will that anointing come on them? Yes. Yes. But were they having the heart like Joseph to serve his father and God? No. So when a person has got a desire to be blessed, but at the same time, he has no intention to serve the Lord through the word of God. That person never sees the manifestation of God's blessing in his life. And then he cannot see. And his other brother is doing marvelous. There comes jealousy. And now he wants to strip that fellow off. Can I go ahead? Yes. Interesting. Interesting? Yes. Daughter came in my life. 19 years ago, when I lost everything, and it looked like the game is over. But in that daughter, God showed up. When it looks like everything is gone, and you are stripped of everything, and you are saying, the game is over, Lord, because you are looking into the scene, and you see everything is against you. It looks like, and the devil is going on saying, game over, game over, game over. Look at the devil and say, as long as I am breathing, it's not yet over. It looks over to you, but let me tell you, my God has a plan, even in this Dothan, because from Dothan, God is leading Joseph to the destination that God has for him and that is the governor of Egypt. Amen. Amen. So daughter will come, oh yeah, daughter is coming for what? To change the direction of Joseph. To teach him some things that he will have to learn for his future calling. Are you, are you with me? Yes. Okay, let's go to 39. Is it 8 o'clock? Yes. yes please. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potiphar. 39 verse 1. 39 verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to <coughs> Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down there. So, so was Joseph sold as a slave? Yes. But even when he was sold as a slave, did you open his mouth and curse his brothers? No. no. Come on, in the natural, was it a good sight? No. no. What would we do? <laughs> hey, what would we do? We would say, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> God will make a way. <laughs> we'll sing that song, isn't it? Hello? When somebody comes and tortures us and makes our life miserable, we sing the song. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Do we sing like that? <laughs> we practice over here these songs so that when trouble comes, we need to sing these songs. But at that time, we don't sing these songs, we sing our own songs. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, have you ever sung your own song when you are angry? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you sing your own song, the devil is saying, shut your mouth. Under pressure, do we sing good songs? They are all married. Okay, you are the only one. Do you also sing songs, Baba? No? <laughs> There's a priest outside. I will have to send you for confession. Do you get angry? No. no. <laughs> yeah, because of air condition, you don't get angry. It's always cool, huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So please write down.
the devil found it the devil found about it the devil found about it and tried to stop it from coming to pass and tried to stop it from coming to pass but in spite of all the devil could do but in spite of all the devil could do joseph please underline the next line joseph would not joseph would not let go joseph would not let go of god's word joseph would not let go of god's Please God. Can you read that line again, please, to your own self before we go ahead? Softly, softly. Read it for your own self. And you have evaluate. What do I do under pressure? shown him in this dream. In his dream he has shown him that every member of his family would be under him. He would be a man of authority, the man of position, the man filled with resources. That's what God has shown him. But now when his brothers put him in the well to kill him, he might have been in that water with frogs and all around him, fishes biting him, praise God, stripped naked, no, no, no clothes at all. And with all this current situation that he was going through, what do you think should have been in his mind? But you don't feel, you don't see Joseph cursing his brothers. Because he refused to look at the current situation, see, he continued to look at what God had promised him. Then one of his brothers said, why put him in the well, why not sell him as a slave? Now imagine he's sold as a slave and he's been taken as a slave. A rich man's pet son. Always a little kutu kutu and Now a slave. What must be happening to him? And I don't even know when they sold him as a slave. They, he had a pair of clothes. He would have been naked. Traveling naked. People watching and in a slave market. And who comes to buy it? Not an ordinary man. The most ruthless man. How do you call Potiphar ruthless? Because if he is in the security and on the top security in the palace, he cannot be a man of kindness and compassion. He has to be extremely cruel to do his job. And if he is getting under such a boss, what do you think should have been? Joseph's situation. Is Joseph now looking at the current situation? Do you find Joseph opening his mouth? See, there must have been so many things running in his mind, but you never find Joseph opening his mouth and cursing his brothers or speaking one word against that dream that God has given him. He keeps his mouth shut rather than speaking unbelief. Do we go under pressure? Yes. Do we open our mouth and speak our unbelief? Yes. So what happens? We have aborted God's miracle in our life. So today the Lord is showing us that nothing just happens by just praying. There has to be a corresponding action to what you are praying for. If your action does not match your prayers, then you are praying in the morning. By the time you come out, you have aborted what you pray. Hallelujah. And when you believe it goes into the trash, ask your neighbor, 
Is your trash bin full or empty? <laughs> These two are discussing too much. What are you discussing? <laughs> discussing trash? <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 Now, in Genesis 39, verse 2, this is my favorite scripture. Okay, what does it say? The Lord was with Joseph, and Joseph was a prosperous man. Now, for the Lord to be with Joseph, was Joseph speaking his unbelief? are still fixed on the vision. So yesterday we were studying in the church, St. Michael's church. Remain in me and I remain in you. You are my branch and you will bear much fruit. Without remaining or abiding in me, you can bear nothing. Praise God. Now what does that mean? Here is Joseph who has been given a vision. Agree? And yet it's a situation exactly opposite because once a slave would die a slave. Agree? Yes. So is there any hope to this man? No. But yet the Bible says the Lord was with him and he was a prosperous man. How can a man who is naked, a slave, having no resources, be a prosperous man? Prosperity in God's kingdom does not depend on what resources you have. Prosperity in God's kingdom depends on who you have with you. Yes. Not what you have, but who you have. Amen. Joseph had God on his side. Why did he have God on his side? Because he was still speaking the unseen. He was still agreeing to God, the dream. He must have said to God, God, I don't understand what's happening. But I do understand you are a God, my creator, who is a master planner. And nobody can plan like you plan. And what I'm going through is just a work in progress. And in this work in progress, I am going to go through this, but my mind still fixed on that vision. And that vision is going to strengthen me as I'm going through because it's just a process. Anybody graduate here? Nobody's graduate? Okay, <laughs> anybody 10th pass? That also not. Anybody has been to school? <laughs> okay, let's say a person is graduate. Do you have the certificate? Yes. Now what does that certificate say? That certificate is saying 15 years of continuous labor with a vision to get that certificate. Going to the college every day. Appearing the exams and passing the exam. To get what? A piece of paper. So for that paper, did we go through 15 years? Yes. Did you have sleepless nights when the exams were there? Yes. Did you have tears? I don't know. Come on. And after all that, you got that paper, right? Mm -hmm. In the same way, when you have the promises of God, one on the right, one on the left, praise God, as the scripture says. I thought they would sit close to me. <laughs> praise God. Praise scriptures are so true, Lord, the last shall be first. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. See, again and again God wants to prove to us. So was he a prosperous man? Yes. Was he a prosperous man on based on resources or his mind on God? So if my mind is on circumstances, am I a prosperous man or the poor man? So who says the, 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 the power of poverty or prosperity? God? Who decides? God?
to me and this this to me god says listen even if those people did that and that to you i still have something greater and greater and greater than what i have planned for you if you can get into my vision and agree with me you will be saying i'm just work in progress it's not yet finished wait till it is finished and by the time i reach the finishing line you will be saying oh my god i never knew that god had such a great plan in my life Amen. I remember when I was small, when people would come from Dubai with their scent and dark glasses and other, and we used to say, we used to look at Dubai and say, <laughs> and then they would bring that soap and chocolates. I did not even think that a day would come that I would go <coughs> to Dubai every month and come back. <laughs> Do you all go every month? <laughs> I'm asking you, do you go every month? No. I go every month. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want you to think. You know why I said I want you to think? 19 years back, this man had no money to eat food. He had no money, that's why he used to take 5 rupees glucose biscuit, take a water, dip it in and eat that glucose biscuit as food. 19 years later on, this man is going to Dubai every month. And I go by flight up. <laughs> Don't believe me. Huh? Okay, next time I'll show you my ticket. So cheap flight now, Praise God. Praise God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. So if your vision is on what God said, and every day you are speaking that vision, then you are bringing the unseen into seeing. But if you are going to speak, looking at your situation, the things that are seen, you have stopped God's purpose, plan in your life for the future. So who is the one who stops? The devil or me? me. Who is the one who executes it? The God or me? me? All this time, what is our prayer? God, please do it. No, he's saying, I am not supposed to do it. I have given you the tools, you do it. Now go and tell God, God, now when after this session is over, sit in your car, start praying, God, take me home. God, please take me home. And don't start the engine. And keep praying. And then you open your eyes, you will be at home. Does it happen? I hope they don't drive yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if there is any person who has got financial crisis, joblessness, this scripture I've seen, I don't, I don't even have to count how people have got jobs from the scripture. Start saying to yourself, the Lord is with me, just like he was with Joseph, and therefore, I am a prosperous man. <coughs> I do not hate anybody. I love them, I forgive them, in the name of Jesus. God has a great plan for my life, plan for my welfare, and therefore, God's plans are accomplished in my life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Put the third verse. Come on, quickly, brother. We have got less time. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. Because of my lifestyle on the word of God, people around me, can see that the Lord is with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And because the Lord is with me, now everything that I do prospers in my hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, might be everything is going crazy in the natural. When you're speaking this, are you speaking the scene or the unseen? No, sir. Now, has this got the power to change your scene to the unseen? Yes. So don't speak what you see. Speak what you want to see. Did I give you good news? Yes. yes. So why are you looking depressed? <laughs> you now you're looking. <laughs> Can you smile? Yes. I'll tell Brother Vijay to put one camera from here. Tony, whenever they do let you know, you should take that. Okay? As we, I'll tell him to put one camera from this side. Next time we can project. Yeah, next time. Yeah. Then they will also see who the story is. <laughs> <laughs>
Is he finding grace? When he is executing, no more grumbling, complaining, murmuring, is he under grace? Whenever a person is grumbling, murmuring and speaking all things that are hurting you, are you under grace or are you under curse? So, Joseph found grace in his sight and he served him. And he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put, he put into his hand. So, because the Lord is with me, my company can put me in any department. I am still rejoicing because God's plan for me is in any department. And because God is with me, his wisdom helps me to prosper in all departments. Might be they took me from one department here and put me there. Who cares? The title doesn't matter to me because what is even they have put me there, I still flourish and God is preparing me something here to take me for the future. Amen. Because in God's kingdom, there is always going to be something called as preparation. Say that. Preparation. Say that again. Preparation. What's happening in these four days is preparation. And after preparation comes opportunities. And when those opportunities come, the devil is watching how are you going to respond. God is going to watch how are you going to respond. If you respond with what you have been prepared in these four days, praise God, the result is promotion. The result is success. So this is not just a lecture class. This is a class to go higher and higher. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we were small, there was something called a subsidy. Snakes and ladder. Life is all about snake and death. Okay. When the brothers hated him, they tried to inject hatred in Joseph. Joseph refused to get into hatred. He operated in love. He got the CD. He got that ladder. I, 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 no, I'm not asking you to put that. But when you go home, to go to Google, Mr. Google and ask him, can you give me the picture of snakes and ladder? If you don't know, you'll get it. Praise God. So every time I go against God's word, snake bit you and take, took you from there. <laughs> every time the snake put, uh, every time the challenge came for you to get into bitterness and hatred and you said, God, your vision for me is great. I refuse to get into this bitterness. And you turned around and prayed and blessed that person and even did good to that person. You just got a ladder and you're very close to the home. Yeah, 1997 pay, what Remember that? Yes. And, and God gave us that game right from childhood to teach us that our whole life is going to be snakes and ladders. No, I don't want to do this. Is <laughs> next, next time, for another scripture, I'll teach you to Hallelujah. 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 Can you ask your neighbor where is your position? Snakes fighting you all the time? Or you're getting some ladders? What are Joseph doing? Hey, listen, listen. When his brother sold him as a slave, it looked like a snake bite. But Joseph turned around that snake bite by operating in love and forgiveness. He got a ladder that he became the manager in the, in the Egyptian master's house. And do you know why God put him in the Egyptian master's house? Because God had to train him what's happening in the palace. So when Potiphar would come home from the palace, he would be discussing about what's happening into, in the palace. Because Joseph was a man that he could see the hand of God on him. So he would discuss some things which he was facing a situation because he knew Joseph had a solution for everything. Because the Lord was with Joseph. So when Joseph was still in the Potiphar's house, God was teaching for him something that he had to learn before he could get to the palace. So if there are some tough things going in your life, it's because God is teaching you for big muscles and big stamina because your calling is too big. Amen. You did not understand. I said you did not understand. I said you did not understand.
Somebody may say, somebody may say, yes, it was amazing. Somebody may say, yes, it was amazing how God, how God led Joseph, how God led Joseph through all those trials, how God led Joseph through all those trials, touched and problems and problems to get him to get him to the position to get him to the position where he would be where 
he would be in authority praise the lord praise the lord is that true yes what is that true yes absolutely wrong god does not have to use the devil to get his job done god does not use the tools of darkness to train his people is not god who did that are you with me jesus clearly said it is a thief who comes to kill steal and destroy the devil was after him to finish him off so that he could finish the whole family of jacob in that famine praise god so the devil planned it all but in the old plan because joseph was a doer of the word of god he dodged the devil in everything that he did and was able to be an overcomer yes. hallelujah 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 so what gave joseph the power to overcome every every shot of the devil the word of god what was that word of god the dream that god had given him that dream strengthened him and kept him going hallelujah his mind was fixed on that unseen that god had shown him and he believed that god who has given me this dream he will surely bring it to pass and i am stuck with that dream and i am ready to go through this process because i don't understand how he's going to do it but if he said it he do it i'm ready to go through it and all that i'm going through right now is just a process and i'm not going to speak my unbelief but i'm going to continue in the word so right now god did not have to use the devil god did not have to use the devil to get joseph to get joseph into a position into a position of authority God did not have to use the devil to get Joseph into a position of authority. His word was capable. His word was capable of doing that. His word was capable of doing that. But Joseph told God's secret. But Joseph told God's secret. God revealed something to Joseph God revealed something to Joseph that he had no business that he had no business sharing with other people that he had no business sharing with other people but in spite of all but in spite of it all but in spite of it all joseph kept god's word joseph kept god's word first place he kept god's word first place he changed the scene he changed the scene and shaped the unseen he changed the scene and shaped the unseen by the word of god by the word of god that was revealed to him by the word of god that was revealed to him so right now in capital letters sometimes <coughs> sometimes silence is more important silence is more important than prayer then prayer you know that what did you write last night <laughs> Okay, let me prove my case. Okay, silence is more important than. 
So let's say a lady was walking <coughs> by the road and it was a lonely road. So she had a chain. idea. She removes the chain and puts it in her socks. Okay? <coughs> so she can feel the chain, right? Yes. Hello, socks. Yes. Yes. And she starts walking. Just then, two men come to rob her. And she opens her mouth and she starts praying. Oh, Heavenly Father, I pray, let them not see the chain in the socks. <laughs> Was it better for her to be silent? Yes. Could the thieves ever check her socks? Her dress was long, but now that she said that, what are the thieves going to do? Get her legs to check what's there. So many a times, we open our mouth and share things for the devil to see it, hear it, and then he comes back after us to torture. That's why God has given us a very powerful gift called the gift of tongues. Hallelujah. So if you want to talk to God about some situation which you don't want the devil to know and the promise that you're holding on, get that vision in your mind, the unclean, speak, uh, not unclean, unseen, okay, and start speaking in tongues. When you're speaking in tongues, the devil doesn't understand what the Spirit of God is interceding on that unseen that you are Asking the Spirit of God to pray on your behalf. Amen. Hallelujah. Got it? Got it? Yeah. <laughs> Got it? So when I come back, I'm going to get result. <coughs> Hallelujah. 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 Now let me show you some people who did not keep quiet and how they destroyed their own lives. Uh, what's the time, please? Nine? Eight thirty-five. Not nine, right? Yeah, because I'm on the countdown. I have to take my flight. Just like you know. Um, every time, oh, local I'm from Bombay, no? We are used to running after local trains. So for me, every time I come to any place, I'm running to reach to the boarding gate on time. Last time I was three minutes before time. Hallelujah. Just three minutes. And I'm <laughs> But the joy was that Lord, that extra time that I gave, somebody's life has got touched. Amen. By God's grace, I've not missed my flight, even though every time I'm running to catch my flight. But today it's going to be before time. Praise God. Praise God. Much before that. Okay. Here we go. People who messed up their life by opening their, their, their mouth. I'm going to go fast and then we'll have the prayers and worship. Praise God. Um, Numbers 13. Has as today's topic helped you in any way? Yes. yes. So if somebody in the house is instigating you, irritating you, are you supposed to open your mouth and or shut your mouth? <laughs> now you shut your mouth about the reaction, but don't shut your mouth of speaking the unseen. Hey, listen, yes. listen. When you are taking shower, okay, the water is at the right temperature. Eat what you want. You don't put the mix of cold and hot. When it is right temperature, you keep that one on. Are you understand? In the same way, when it comes to speaking the unseen promises of God, please don't shut your mouth. But when unbelief is coming out of your mouth, shut your mouth. Clear? Otherwise, you will go home confused. Yeah, for three days, you are saying, open your mouth. And I'm, before leaving, he's saying, shut your mouth. 
Hallelujah. On one side is coming uh, the blessing. On the other side is coming the curse. So the tap to curse, shut it, weld it. That it should not be opened. So I'm not going into detail. The, the, the situation is like this. Moses has chosen 12 leaders. Say that leaders. Yes. Say that again. Yes. Say that again. Yes. Say that again. Yes. Say that again. Please. Yes. I, want to help. Yes. I, I like the word leaders. Say that. Yes. Who are the leaders? Leaders. The, leaders. The, the, the leaders are those who lead others in a direction. Mm -hmm. So there are 12 leaders yes. or 12 tribes right. who are good people. They are not bad. They are good people. Okay, they have been sent on a mission to go and spy the land flowing with milk and honey and they have come back after 40 days. So let's see the conversation of the game that is going on in this situation. And they returned from searching of the land, 25. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 after days. 40 days. so 40 days they have seen they have had an experience of 40 days Two, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back Word. and brought back Word. and brought back Word. and brought back seen on scene Unseen, unseen, unseen. They brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them and showed them the fruit of the land. So they have come back with the word what they have seen. And they told him and they told Moses and said, We have come, we came unto the land where you had sent us, and surely, said that surely, surely it flows with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. What's the next line? Nevertheless. Uh, can you have any other translation there? Yes. Any translation? NIV? Amplified. <coughs> 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 no, not amplified. It will but be the people who live there are the people are who live in the land. Yet the people who live in the land are. Uh, yet. What, what, what's your translation? But the people ah, I want this. What, what's the word? NIV. NIV. Just give me an NIV. Is there an NIV? No. Okay. Oh, which one do you want? Amplified and ESV and King James. Okay, ESV. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's in the ESV. 27. 28. Mm -hmm. The same one. ESV. Tony, what's up? However, no, I don't want however. Any, any, you got, but, but, yeah. Any, 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 anybody has got a Bible on your mobile? Yeah, what, what, what do you want? Yeah, just give me the NIV. So the NIV. No, I don't get the word that I want. NIV, okay, okay, read it. 27. Uh, 28, sorry, 28. Okay, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the people who live. It went off. Okay. But the people who live. Uh, okay, I'll read it. I'll read it. We went, uh, are you ready? Yes. Because I want the word but. Nevertheless, also is something like but. Yet, also is something like the word but. Okay. okay this one is running, my dear. Running too much. How do you manage that phone? Yeah, phones are too small. 
descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites lived in, in Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites lived in the hill country and the Canaanites lived near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. But the men but the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. Now, here's a conversation going on. There are 12 people who went and they saw the same thing. And they brought back a report. Ten of them said, We saw this land is flowing with milk and honey. But... We also saw that there are giants there. Have you ever used the word but in your conversation? Give me an example. No, no, there should be something before the but. Yeah, give, me, give me an example, yeah. Okay. You are selected, yeah. but if you have a driver's license, yeah. we'll take you. Okay. Something else? I'm here, I'm with you, but huh? I'm here, but the pain is still there. I'm here, but the pain is still there. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we saw the children of Adam there. Now, if you see on before the bat is speaking something positive. After the bat is speaking the scene, which is negative. Right? Now look at Kelly. The Amalekites dwelt in the land of the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountain, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Now, after all this, 30, Caleb. And Caleb still the people. Why do you think the pe he had to still the people? Caleb had to still the people. Because the words that were spoken, were of unbelief. They have come out of Egypt, they have come to the border, and it's only to enter into the promised land, and here is the ten spies, leaders, who are speaking unbelief. They are speaking what they saw. They are thinking what they saw. And they are speaking. Now, the moment they spoke those words, is it like a virus so contagious? What did the people do? As soon as they received that word, they came to a conclusion, we are not going into that land. Had God given them that land? Yes. yes. Was it named after them? Yes. Was it their inheritance? Yes. yes. But did they have to go and take possession of that land? Yes. 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 Did God promise them that he would be with them? Yes. Yes. Had God been with them from Egypt to the border? Yes. Had God taken care of all their needs? Yes. So even if there were giants, it was God still there to fight the battle for them. Yes. But what did they speak? Now what? Listen. Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once, at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. How come one person is speaking this and ten people are speaking the other way? Because they have seen it and it is not working. What did he say? What did he say? Twelve and one river. I've never got an answer like this. Huh? Why? They were seeing things based on their ability against the giants. Caleb was seeing that even though we are not able to, because God is with us, we are overcomers. He was looking at the unseen God helping them because God had said, I have given you this land. Hallelujah. 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 So was Caleb speaking the scene? What had God promised? Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So were they supposed to speak and act on that? Yes. Did they do that? No. no. I want you to close your eyes and look at your own life before we go further. Just put that God will make a way. Which song you had put? Here we are. Here we are. Okay. I want you to close your eyes, reflect on the lyrics that is being played. Okay? Those lyrics speaks about belief. Lifting our hands to you.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory. Lifting our hands to you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I've got just five more minutes to share a little and then we go into demonstration. Okay? Just give me five more minutes. Was study. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Verse 31. But the men, but the men went up with him and said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they for they are stronger than we are. Now we use the word but. Now somebody will say, brother, if I am suffering with something and according to the word of God, I am not supposed to speak what I am suffering, then how will I make known to my family members what I am going through? So if I don't communicate, how will I get help? Come on. So there is a word called but that comes to your rescue. Remember, every time a person has been using the word but, everything that he says before the but is not what he believes. It is after the but that he believes. So the person will say, I know the word of God is alive, it's active. I know the word of God is powerful. I know the word heals people. God sent this word and healed and delivered his people. I know God works miracles. I know that Jesus is alive. I know the Spirit of God does wonders. But I still got diabetes. I'm still jobless. And my, 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 but my marriage is not blessed. Now what did that person say? That person said, all that I spoke before is not what I believe. I believe what I'm going through which is seen. Now how does a person speak who has got faith? He says, I have diabetes, there's a crisis in my marriage, I've been jobless, I've got this problem, I've got that problem, but my God is with me. My help comes from God. He is my savior, he is my deliverer, he helped me to fight the lion, he helped me to fight the bear, and he is now going to help me to fight this Goliath. <laughs> now, when, when they were using the word but, Caleb was also using the word but. But Caleb was using the but by saying what he believed. And that's why he said, come on, let's go and take the land. You mean to say Caleb had so much of strength? No, Caleb was not looking at the things seen. He was looking at the one who promised him that he has given the land. God never said, I will give you the land. He said, I have given you this land. And if God has said he has given up this land, that means the land is mine. That's why you find the promises of God in the New Testament. Every promise of God is in past tense. God never says, I will bless you. He says, I have blessed you. God does not say, I will anoint you. He says, I have anointed you. God doesn't say, I will pour out my spirit on you. He, he, I will pour out my love into you. He says, God has already poured his love into us the day we received the Holy Spirit. Every one of God's promises is a yes and a yes and a yes. It's now and it's in the past end. For God, it is finished when Jesus said, it is finished. But for me, it is not yet finished because I'm talking what I can see. If I can change that from what I see and start agreeing to God and start speaking what God has promised in the word, I can use the but to my situation and say, Hey, situation, you are threatening me, but my God is a God who gives life to the dead. My God is a God. and created the light and I am created in the likeness and image of God and therefore I can talk to this mountain and it shall obey me. Now let me show you a very powerful scripture where we go wrong. Look at that verse 32. Just two minutes. Verse 32. <coughs> and they brought up 
and they brought up and they brought up and they brought up you have to say anything that I see and I speak is an evil report come on they spoke what they saw you mean to say if I speak what I see is it an evil report were they giants yes were they strong yes did they eat people yes so it does it become an evil report if you go around telling people what you saw it does not become an evil report when you speak what you see it becomes an evil report when you speak something that you saw and comes to a conclusion against the word of God because look what he's saying look what he's saying in verse number 31 but the men that went up with him said we be not able to go up against the people in other words say God said I have given you this land go and possess it and what are they saying God we are not going against that uh, people because we don't have the power we don't have the strength now did they go against God yes. see as long as they saw as long as they said what they saw there was no evil report but the moment they used the words 31 it went against God's word and it became an evil report and when a person speaks an evil report he has activated a curse on his life so in a day how many evil reports do we speak out of our mouth ignorantly and that evil report which was spoken the Israelite received the evil report and they turned their back and destroyed their own future whereas it was their inheritance to enjoy the land flowing with milk and honey and even today the same thing is happening in our life that Jesus has won the battle for us and he said it is finished when Jesus said it is finished we are speaking an evil report by disagreeing to what Jesus has finished on the cross and when we go against what Jesus has finished on the cross we ourselves have activated a curse on our life by bringing in the evil report and when you bring in the evil report you go around sharing with others an evil report you become an instrument of getting unbelief in other people's life and you are not only destroyed your life you are destroying other people's life as well it's extremely dangerous to carry evil reports imagine they had a land flowing with milk and honey an evil report coming out of their mouth not only destroyed them, destroyed the whole Israelites. So when a person says, I got diabetes, is it an evil report? <coughs> Come on, yes or no? God said, by stripes you were healed. What are you saying? Hello, what are you saying? The scripture says, by stripes you were healed. What report are you giving? The doctor said. But what the doctor said is against what God said. And when you give those reports and go around telling everybody, you have cursed your own life and you are not going to inherit what Jesus earned for you on the cross. Shut your mouth and don't go around giving evil reports. So do we need to repent about the evil report? Yes. I am jobless. I don't have money. I am in financial crisis. But God said he is the God who supplies all your needs. He said I am your provider. So what report are you carrying every day? That's why that white book is a book, not a prayer book. It's a, a book of report of heaven that carries good report. Amen. Anointed report. And that's why I keep telling people, speak it, study it, believe it, see it with your eyes of faith. And that report will bring forth the manifestation and destroy every purpose. And we not only carry this evil report, we go around sharing and the devil is saying, when you share with others, you feel good. <laughs> and you come back saying, I felt so good. After three days, you got a big punch. Why? Because that evil report is bringing the harvest now. 
this God. Let us all stand. Listen, there's going to be no song. But I want to tell you, did the Jericho wall come down when people of God praise God? Do you believe that when you praise God, what happened then can happen today? Hello? Can spiritual walls that the devil has built in your life a stronghold in your mind that you have been carrying unbelief, 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 unbelief all the time, all the time. And now's the time to destroy that unbelief spirit out of our lives. Amen? Amen. 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 And I'm here to tell you, a person who was preaching to you was a champion of champion speaking unbelief. That's why I used to be in depression, a psychiatric person. And if that person, when he learned no longer to carry the evil report, only God's report, and God turned around my life and brought such prosperity in my life, is that same God promising you the same thing. Come on. A life flowing with milk and honey. But if you are going around speaking evil report, you like the Israelite is going into the wilderness for the next, I don't know how long, and end up your life. So take your time for two minutes and then we start praising God. Talk to the Lord and say, Lord, thank you for helping me to understand. I've been opening my mouth and speaking all unwanted rubbish and garbage of the devil. Lord, cleanse my tongue. Destroy the power of those words that are spoken of unbelief. I have been the author of my own destruction. Lord, I repent and I ask you, Lord, Jesus, let there be a spiritual flood, a spiritual famine, a spiritual drought that will destroy all those weeds and, and dangerous harvest that is growing and is bringing the fruit. Destroy everything, O oh Lord, that is not of your kingdom. And Lord, I believe and I trust in you that right now, you have taught me to shut my mouth when it comes to speaking unbelief. But you have also anointed my mouth that when I open my mouth and give you praises. Your word says in Psalms 8 verse 2, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, you have ordered praise to paralyze and defeat the enemy. So Lord, it's time for us to exercise our faith. And every word of praise coming out of our mouth, destroys every work of the devil in the name of Jesus. Uh, Tony, you got every praise? You got that song, Every Praise to Our God? No, no, no. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's let's pray. Give free praise to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, destroy every work of Satan. Lord, bring the miracles. Bring the miracles. 
you believe what you heard? Yes. Now do you have a good report or an evil report? Yes, God. So I've got good news to tell you. On the 1st of December, I'm coming back. Wow. And in the month of December, I'm there for six days. Wow. That was not happy. Did you see? The second one was not happy. Hallelujah. Extended Hallelujah. Some more days. Extended some more days. <laughs> Hallelujah. So can I leave now? Yes. Thank you. He, he has a flight to one. Let's all stand and see a small prayer. Come. Let's. Whatever. Okay? Brother, be the children. Let's all stretch out our hands towards brother. He's going to Australia, which is a new venue for him. Okay? And he's going to go and touch lights out there. So let the Lord go with him. Let the Holy Spirit go. Loving Father, bless Brother Johnson, wherever he goes, let him touch the lives of thousands and millions and billions of people yes, in this world. Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, let his commanding words fill the hearts of all the people, Lord. Yes. And may so what is called love. Very when she says that I've got a passion, she says I'm ready to sacrifice you for your passion. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Even though I'm going to Australia, I want to tell you, I go to Australia only to sleep at night at home, but during the day I'm still on a mission. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. So, so that, that, that kind of love to accept is really amazing grace. Amen. It's an amazing place. Yes. Let's pray for the family. Let's pray for the family. Let's raise our hands, okay? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you and bless you, Father God. Yes, Lord. For this wonderful anointed servant of yours, Father God. Yes. Brother Johnson, my Lord. Yes. Lord, thank you for bringing him here every month, my Father. Yes. And touching so many life, Father God. We have been enriched in your word only because of him, my God. Thank you for sending him to us, my Father. And God, you never make a mistake, my Jesus. Lord, we surrender his family to you, Father God. His wife and his two daughters and his son-in-law, my Father God. All of them there with him in this mission, Father God. And his life itself has been such a beautiful testimony, Father God. Which only shows us that even from the pits you think people, people out and make them prophets, Father. And make them stand on pulpit, brother. And make them stand on pulpit, my yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 God, we want to thank you and praise you, Father God. As he leaves us, Father God, we wish him a beautiful journey, Father God. May the Holy Spirit go with him, Father God. And may whichever place he goes be a cakewalk for him, Father God. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated, please be seated. God be with you, brother. Please be seated. Okay, he, he is coming here on the first of next one, okay? So that program is already fixed. Though you'll be getting a post, a WhatsApp message and all, which comes regularly to you, yeah? First is Friday. Friday. Then he's there for six days. So one of the days, because the evening things will go on. And of course, St. Michael's, our English charismatic will be there. And also the St. Mary's Dubai will be there. Okay? Now, coming Friday is going to be a little special because my son will be celebrating his birthday. So I would request and all of you all to come that day, to come and bless him and to pray for him. So the morning session will be on, and Roy will be doing the praise and worship. Oh, oh, Hallelujah. Okay, please pray for him. He's not a little well now, so he's inside. But again, one big round of applause for our brother Tony, 
un medio de la otra vez. Y, 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 y,